Hello everybody, welcome to my new video for today. In today's video, I'm, I actually got asked on Instagram, uh, there was a high school dude who was really interested in my forms, and I'm sure he's probably taking a class right now, and he asked me uh, like, if I could give him some tips on mimicking my forms, which wow, what a great honor to have somebody think about my forms that way, that they want to like make them. So. I'm going to be focusing a lot on the things that he asked since I'll be talking a lot about my pots today. I also reclaimed and I finally reclaimed some clay so I'm going to be talking about that at the intermission. And then I also finally cleaned out the basement so that's like a really big thing. I'm going to be sort of moving into some new things for some videos here coming up and so I'm looking forward to showing you guys some of that. And then to end off I got another mug video for you guys at the end. And that's about it. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoy the video. See you in a second. Peace. Hello, everybody. It's me. We're back again with some more trees today. And today I finally cleaned the studio. I finally did it. Maybe behind me, I'll like have uh, some video footage of how clean it is in here. It's never been this clean before. So that's like so exciting. It's so clean. I think you guys can hear an echo, right? Like I hear an echo and it's kind of, I need to get some more stuff in here to stop that because it's kind of tripping me out a little bit. But that's exciting and we're finally reclaiming some of the, the clay that we've been accumulating, which is nice. You know, I probably have, I don't know, maybe like 50 pounds, 50 pounds of clay that's been accumulated here. So it's gonna be nice. It'll save me some more, some more money. I think I got keys in my pocket and I like that's something it's kind of like a a ceramic thing too is like uh, I can't throw with things in my pocket right because I like my elbow is always pushing in and so it kind of drives me a little bit crazy And, you know, I also had someone who's a, a guy, I forget what he asked me. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do that right now. Because he asked me a question. It was a, he was like a high schooler. He seems like he's really interested in ceramics. And he saw a video on my Instagram, I guess, and he asked me, he said... Corbin. All right, Corbin. He said, hi, I was wondering if you had any tips on mimicking your style of throwing. Holy cow, guys. What an honor. Well, Corbin, I'll, I'll honor your request in this video today. And maybe I'll, on this first pot, I'll talk a little bit about my mindset when I'm approaching the clay, right? Like right now in high school, you're probably learning from someone, you know, I'm not going to like assume their skills, right? But if you're getting taught uh, something in high school, it's going to be very, it's a controlled uh, way of teaching, right? And it's going to be very systematic, right? And so first things first, you got to get your mind out of that, those sort of systems. Right? And it's going to be really difficult because you got assignments, you got classes, you got all sorts of stuff. Right? And so the first thing that I did before I even started getting to be able to throw like how I throw now is I just made a ton, an absolute ton of cups, right? Cylinders, right? And so that was the basis of everything for me was cylinders, right? A cylinder, you can get it off the wheel re really quickly, right? I can make a bunch of them, and for me, 
right? I'm not like, I can't be told something, you know, a certain way, and I can't read something, and all of a sudden magically, you know, I know how it works, right? For me, it's very, very different. For me, it's like I got to do it thousands and thousands and thousands of times before I can even start to do the thing right properly. I can get like average skill fast, but to get above average skill, it took it takes a long time. So, like you might have to. I was looking at your page. Maybe I'll show some of uh, his ceramics. I hope he doesn't mind. But it seems like you're really fixated on like vase forms right now, right? And shapes. And although that like might be uh, something that's really alluring to you right now, if you can learn to just make a cylinder, all those shapes come along with it, right? Instead of trying to learn how to make those shapes, just try to start off with learning cylinders, right? And just make tons and tons of them. And like, uh, if you really wanna like learn like to throw, you just gotta, you gotta put everything else aside and like uh, spend time with the material, right? That's like, I didn't start throwing until I was a junior in uh, undergrad, right? And so you're way ahead of the curve now if you started, man. I'm telling you, Corbin, you'd be like next level by the time you're like 24 if you throw every day, right? Uh, but I know not everybody has the facilities for that sort of stuff. So, but that's step one. Just just throw cylinders nonstop like an animal, right? What I a problem that you might run into, right? Is all the the fancy forms, the drawing on the surfaces, right? But if you want to throw and mimic like my style of throwing, you just gotta give those away. You just gotta say, all right, well, you know what? And even at the beginning of this video, you'll see that I, when I started off, I was doing a lot of sculptural work that was figurative. And to be completely honest, I didn't, I, at the time I was trying to, I was saying that this is the way, you know? This is the way I do my pottery. But it was actually just an insecurity, right, that I had because I couldn't throw. I just couldn't throw. Right, all my pots were thick, and so what I would do is I'd just put a, um, uh, what's the word, facial features. I'd put facial features on it, and I'd say, that's the reason why they're thick, right? That's the reason why, you know, and it would be excuses. You can't make excuses for yourself in pottery, right? Because the, the material is facts, right? What's happening in the material? You cut this thing open, that's the facts, right? You can't... You can't lie to yourself in pottery, right? Even though some people try, you know, that's all you gotta do is pick up the object and then listen to somebody talk about it and you'll know, you'll know. But as I'm throwing too, a lot of people and beginners, when I like I'm talking with them, right? They're always super, super fast, right? Can't be fast. You gotta be slow when you're first starting, man. Because if you're going too fast, you're not, you're not listening and you're not feeling your interaction with that clay, all right, man? Like, you gotta go slow and you gotta feel like, oh, my fingers went this way, right? Okay, that I need to do it like this. Or I call them butter moments, right? You're searching for these moments in throwing, man, like, uh, that are making you feel, uh, as if the clay is just listening to you. It's moving as smooth as butter is, right? And whenever you have those moments, you gotta stop and you gotta, you gotta investigate. You, you seriously have to write it down. You have to ask yourself what I did. You gotta record yourself, right? You gotta, you really gotta do those things. Uh, because my style of throwing isn't uh, like a system, right? Although it has a pattern, it's not a system. Think of it as like a prayer in a Bible, right? Every time you say the prayer, you know, you say it with a different inflections. Maybe sometimes you'll sing it or something. I don't know, right? But it's kind of like that. It's not like a, a rule. It's not like this does this, right? 
a lot of my style of throwing is responding to what's happening in the clay right now. Okay, also I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Now I got a cylinder, right? After you get to the cylinder, everything else just falls into place, right? Um, for example, uh, it would have been preferable since I'm going wider on the top here to leave a little bit of extra thickness on that top, right? On one of the next pots, I'll sort of talk to you a little bit more about like the actual mechanics of throwing. But I think, right, it's important to get my like methodology down if you want to make pots like me. Which is, thanks again for taking interest, man. That's very nice of you. But I already messed up my rhythm, but I saw that it was... Uh, not where I wanted it to be. So then I moved my finger a little bit to try to push it back in there, right? So I'm trying to be very reactive. I'm listening to the clay. I'm looking at it. I'm saying, okay, well, when do I stop on this top? Oh, right there. Do you see this thought? It's not as tall as these other ones. So that's going to be an inconsistency, right? And so I'm going to just go focus on there next time I go around. And whatever you do once in clay, if you keep doing it, it's going to heighten it, right? Okay, so here I am. And when I'm going to open up this top, right, I got to be careful, right, because I got to go slow and it's going to want to twist, right? That's perfect, right? We want that twist and we're going to sort of follow the clay. The clay is sort of guiding us a little bit, right? Because it's going to, it's wanting to be off center here a little bit. And that's okay, right? Like anything that a machine can make, Corbin, why would we want to make it, right? That's my mentality. Right? Like, I don't want to make things that a machine can just do and, like, and that's it, right? I want to make things that when, it, when you look at it, you can't deny the humanity that's baked into the pot, right? And for me, that doesn't happen through images on the surface. That doesn't happen. It happens through my hands altering that material in a way that only a human could, right? And then I'm looking at this bottom part here. And, you know, there's one thing, Corbin, that I don't ever do. Well, I do do it sometimes as like uh, for demos and stuff when I'm teaching people, but I don't trim, right? And so this is, this all this little flange here on the bottom, that's all stuff that normally people would take off, right? Cut off. And like that's all extra. Um, but for me, all that stuff has potential, right? And so whenever you're throwing, Everything that you're cutting off had the potential to do something on the surface. Even when it's cut off, how come we don't put it back on there, right? And so that's something that uh, you can learn a little bit from, uh, like me, if anything, uh, is these things that we sort of discard in clay can actually become things. And so that's also an important component of like a lot of my, my throwing style. Um, <coughs> You know, and a big, another big thing, right, is Corbin, I'm sure since you see my, my Instagram, you'll look at my, my little pottery edit videos, right? They're not like normal videos in the fact, pottery videos in the fact that, you know, normal pottery videos are highlighting the, like, the calming aspects of pottery. For me, it's, pottery has never been something that's calm for me. It's always been a struggle, and it always will be a struggle for me, and it's that battle where I actually find value, right? And so if you're doing pots, right? I had a rule for a long time, and I still have this rule uh, from the majority of it. If I can't finish in one day, I don't even want to do it, right? Because the people who are like mewling over the surface, over, you know, that's not where I want to, that's not even where I want to be. That's not what I want my pottery to be is just time, right? A, oh, a certain amount of time, and I achieved it, right? And, oh, I worked on this for 40 days and 40 nights, right? I want my pots to be a to achieve that through collective, right? Through multiples. Um, so here's this pot. So you can see what I did with that extra stuff on the bottom that becomes part of the form, right? And so that's kind of a, a key component with a lot of my pottery. We'll set this one down on the side. And I'll kind of be a little bit... Uh, I'll talk more about the analytical things of throwing the actual cylinders, right? But for me, like I thought the initial thing with this form was I was doing a lot of spirals before, right? And then you're just, that's all you're doing is you're just moving your wheel a little bit slower while keeping that same speed of a pole 
And since your wheel is moving slower, before it makes a full rotation, you're above where it was before, and that's what's creating that spiral. Right? So I was doing a lot of spirals, but spirals are kind of trendy in ceramics. And I was like, that's not me. And you know what else is another thing that's trendy is bellying out your pots, like making a belly for your pots, right? And so I was like, dang, what's the opposite of a belly, right? And that's, for me, that's a twist, right? I'm thinking about like, I'm sure you're, since you're in high school, you'll know like when people take those water bottles and twist them up, right? And then they, all that air is compressed, right? I like, I want my forms to feel like twisted and compressed and like tortured and freaking, you know, like that's, that, that's always been a key component for me, right? And as I'm talking, Corbin, you can hear that a lot of things I'm talking about, man, are all about, uh, you know, form, like the way that form functions for me, right? My, my ideas behind form, you know, you, like you might not be able to, you know, get to the point where you can totally mimic my, my pots exactly. And if you can, totally cool, you know? But what, if you can get anything out of what I'm trying to talk to you is like, for me, form is where you have your opinions, right, on the world. Form is, form is so important. So if you can somehow find some like core values that are deep into your thing, and I think one of my core values is I just can't get along with the bandwagons. You know, the bandwagon, if everybody's going one way, like I just can't force myself to like it. And sometimes that, you know, that can be a flaw in my own mentality, but so that's sort of why some of my forms exist and some of my processes exist because it's all been because people have told me that they can't can't really be that way or people have told me that it should be this way or this is the real intention or even when people say the form is now liberated it can be anything right i'm also wary of that i'm like wait hold on now like if it can if it can be anything then there's it's no point there's no point to it right uh at least that was like my thinking so i kind of am just like try to adopt this like uh I know the word lone wolf is kind of cringe, but uh, like lone wolf style of making where you sort of observe things that you like and what you don't like and things that you don't like, try to talk about those in your form, right? Care about a material enough where you can, you can form an opinion on it. And maybe it's not, maybe it doesn't even become clay. Like for me, man, Corbin, I, I used to do all those charcoal drawings. You can see some of those in the beginning of my video. I used to draw. I wanted to be an animator, man. And then all of a sudden, Clay sort of found me at just the right time. And I just was like, all right, well, now I'm stuck with it, right? Material is supplemental, right? Ideas is like what you're trying to do. And when you can match an idea with a material and it feels good, man, that's, that's a good spot to be in. That's a good spot to be in. Okay, so totally on the last one, I'll talk about the coning up and down, but on this first one, what I've done is I'm just making sure, since I'm not trimming, I'm making that bottom thin enough so then it's not gonna be too thick, right? I want it to just be able to function at the bottom there. I'm doing a claw grip. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking that, my fingers here, and that's going underneath this ledge on the outside. And then my thumb on the inside is going right there. I'm not sure if anybody's ever told you about these S and S curve. Right, but that's how you throw. A lot of people, they throw just with two fingers pointing at each other, right? And what that's doing, that's squishing the clay, right? In that direction, in that direction, in that direction, in that direction. So you don't really have a lot of control. And a lot of times, if you're trying to get height, they'll always just be ripping off at the bottom, in the middle, because you just are not, uh, the clay is moving and it's not moving in an even way, right? So if there's a weak point or a thin point of one part, you know, it's very easy for your fingers to just catch and rip it open, right? So when I'm doing this first pull, it's like a claw grip pull and I'm pulling from this front here. So all this hand is doing, man, is it's coming up and up towards like my, my nose almost. So it's like here and it's just slowly moving inwards towards that center where I'm trying to keep that S curve, right? And so that S curve is so important because as my interior is pushing out, right? You'll see a little nodule form and I'm sure you saw it earlier. Right? And then what the exterior finger is doing is taking that nodule and when you say pull, you're not actually pulling. What you're doing is stretching, man, right? So you're stretching that clay, right, through that S. It was a line, but since you're making that line an S, you're stretching that clay out and you're realigning it to that bottom knuckle, right? And that's sort of what the pull is, essentially, right? 
And so you'll see on my thumb here, I'm just taking that little nodule. You can see, even see it. Do you see this little nodule here? Like that's where my thumb is kicking out on the inside of this thing. And then my fingers on the outside, you see them right underneath. And then my hand is also kind of cupping it. And I'm just bringing that in all together, right? And then that's how I'm doing that first initial pull. And that the goal of your first pull is get as much of that clay up into your pot as possible, right? The second thing I do, I've, I've been doing this more recently, right? But there's still a lot of clay in that bottom part. So I'll take my, my palm of my hand here and I'm taking my interior finger and I'm trying to just push more of that clay up, right? And you don't, you want to be careful because it's very easy for you to push your hand too hard on that exterior and throw it off center, right? And so that's been helping me get more of that clay up off that bottom there. And so then I'm going to go do a normal basic pull here. And I'll do it sort of here so I can show you more. But you can see I'm taking, I'm, you can even see, do you see how there's like a little yellow line here and then there's clay? I'm, I'm all the way down at the bad head. I'm using a sponge. You can use your finger. You really want it to feel like you're getting scratched by that bad head. And I'm creating, and I'm going really slow at the bottoms. You want to go really slow at the bottoms because if you go too fast, sometimes it's thicker. And if you mess it up, at the bottom, you're pulling that mistake all the way up through your pot, right? And so you can see I have that same little, that ring from that interior. And then look, man, look how direct my fingers are. It is like almost straight across, right? If you're kind of like have all sorts of your hand touching that surface area, it's going to be pulling. That's a lot of uh, area where the clay could catch on your finger, where if it's just on one point, that direct pressure, that's going to move the clay a lot more. So if you're, if you're throwing and you're struggling, maybe just try to go a little bit more across each other like that, right? I use my knuckle sometimes. I use my finger. I kind of, on this exterior, I kind of mess around with it. Um, but as you get to the top, the clay is also really, really, it's going to be a little bit fickle because all that tension in the clay is building up and then it's getting released right off that rim. So people say compress the rims. I haven't really formed an opinion on it yet, but I try to do some level of compression, but I'm not really sure, uh, in my personal opinion, how effective it is with my style of throwing. Um, so you can see that's the, that's the first pull. We're gonna do it again here, man. And so when we're doing this again, I'm putting some water on, right? I have water going on the exterior all the way down, and then I'm taking my interior finger and I'm dragging it down the side of that wall and I'm pushing that water, lubricating that wall, right? And now I'm gonna go again, really nice and slow at the bottom. I'm gonna slow my wheel head down too. I'm spinning a little bit too fast. All right, look at this, man. It's starting to kick out a little bit in that middle part, right? But that's okay. And so, from this point, I would say I could try to fuss with it and get it to be nice and straight. I could collar on more. I'm a little bit thin getting towards the top, so you know, that's another thing about my process, right? Don't get fixed over everything being perfect, right? That's not, Im that's not important. Perfection is not, not ideal. What you want is potential, right? You want to maximize potential of creating new forms with every pot. And so here I am, I'm defining that bottom rim a little bit more. And now I'm going to start. And when I'm doing this, what you can do if it helps, you can like, Spin your wheel and do go boom, 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 boom. And you'll make a star pattern. And then you can sort of go slow, right? And you follow each one where you're touching the clay because it's creating a, a pattern or a rhythm. But as you get better at it, you sort of discover your own rhythm and what the rhythms result in as a form, right? This one I split it, so that's kind of unfortunate. So one side's gonna be a little bit bigger. So I gotta keep that in mind as I'm doing this. 
And as I do the final little part on the top here, right, I'm going to have some issues, right? You can kind of set it down with one hand too if you want, just so you can look. Take your finger and you want to make sure it's lubricated but not soaking. And that's enough for me. You know, I got it wide enough. You can try to pull it all the way out, but it, I'd have to leave more thickness on that top to be able to do that, right? Some of the pots I do. And then I'm just taking my finger on that outside. It's all about rhythm. I always thought that these, these forms kind of looked like trees, right? What does everybody want? They want the nice belly on the bottom, and then they want the nice little thin top, right? <laughs> I want to do the opposite of that with these forms, right? And so that's kind of my, my thought process on that, Corbin. I feel like everybody else who's watching this is gonna be like, who the heck's Corbin? But I did kind of explain. You messaged me on Instagram. I can't tell you how much it means to me, man, that you, you found interest in my, my pots, right? I appreciate that. And so that's why I'm doing all this stuff, you know? And you can let me know if you have more questions too, man. Like, I don't mind, I can, I can't, uh, you know, remember that I'm doing my own thing and I'm trying to get to my own goals. So I might not be able to help you out like all the, all the time, right? But if I ever, if it ever fits in my schedule, like, like what this is right now, you know, like I don't mind, dude. Um, and so now that potential is a lot less on the bottom before it kind of came out and I could cut it with that wire tool. But now I'm going to just find the rhythm again, boom, 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 there we go. And so now we have this sort of, I like to think of it as like grass at the bottom of the tree, right? Again, it's all about maximizing potential. And sometimes, I use a lot of water, so sometimes this stuff rips. You can even see a fissure there. This one will rip and fall by the end of the video, so you'll see that. I'm, so I'm going so thin right on that top rim and I'm using I use a lot of water You know, it's, that's another thing people say don't use as much water Dude use as much water if you want some some of my coolest forms with these tree forms are ones in which they've collapsed They've ripped apart they fissure, right? That's the cool part about it And I also think it's interesting that it happens while it's not even on the wheel like this sort of this is The falling apart of the form happens after the fact right it happens when it's off the wheel and so for me, it's kind of an interesting way to think about objects completing themselves while you're not even altering them, right? It's kind of like what we think about, like, uh, if you think about kiln firing, you know? Um, but, yeah. I went over the S-curve, went over that. You know, there's also a tendency, uh, you know what, I'll get there when I get there. Uh, for now, I'm going to just, okay, I also got to... Well, Corbin, here in a second, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to a video of me um, showing you about reclaiming clay, uh, and this goes for everybody. Everybody can watch this. And so I've been reclaiming some of my clay, so I'll go over that here in a second. You could just see some of the new studio, but I need to reset my timer because I only got 30 minutes, and I'm kind of it's only gonna be a long video today. So sorry about that, guys. Um, but here, uh, this is the new commercial on how to mix. Uh, how to mix your reclaim. I hope you guys enjoy. See you in a second. All right, guys. I'm gonna show you how I go about mixing some clay uh, from reclaim. So I usually get like a bucket. Sometimes you can get bigger buckets, but the bigger buckets often have uh, things at the bottom and I use a drill to mix it. And so I don't want to have the ghost, it hears me. But I don't want to have, oh man, that's spooky as hell. <laughs> but what I don't want to have happen, right, is I don't want there to be like that drill to kick something on the bottom and put a hole in the bottom. Uh, it's just a mess that you don't want to clean up, right? And I usually keep the buckets right around like 80% and lower full, right? Because when you go to mix it, it's going to want to kick some of that up, right? 
and I just get one of these uh, it's like a little red paint mixing thing it looks like a star and I just have a like a screw-on drill you can get a screw-on drill for like 30 bucks you know so it's not it's not too bad and the way I do it is I just sort of mix it around here I feel like I should get a bigger mixer, to be honest. Hold on one second. You know what? I don't have a bigger mixer. We'll just do this. This one's a little bit too... This is I use for mixing glazes. But... Actually going pretty good. But I have one that's a little bit bigger on that top. The head is a little bit bigger. And that would mix this up a lot nicer. But we're kind of wanting it to get this, you know. I think we're pretty much good. You know, you just want it to be mixed up enough to where you can scoop it out with your hands, right? Because once you can do that, you're in a good spot. All right, I'll see you guys in a second. All right, all right guys, so here's that bucket. And we have, it's uh, not mixed all the way. And one thing that you're gonna notice is that it's gonna smell like so bad. It's gonna, it's gonna reek, right? But that's okay. You know, I'm just putting my hand down in here. And I'm just sort of trying to hand mix some of this stuff. And this one doesn't stink as bad as some of the other ones. But some of the other ones, oh my lord, they're gonna be, it's gonna be nasty. All right. This is all, when I'm mixing it, first I let it dry all the way and I break it into shards. And I take those shards, right? And after I have those shards, uh, those dry pieces, then you add water to it, right? And when you do that, what happens is it all dissolves. Sometimes if you try to reclaim clay and you're trying to reclaim like a big chunk of something that's like leather hard, you can get like a really uncomfortable outcome where all of a sudden the clay almost or the water seals that that leather hard thing with like a little sur like surface of water and it won't ever really dissolve right and so that's like a key for doing this sort of stuff is you just want to make sure that it's all dry before you start this stuff right and don't be afraid to get a, a little bit messy, you know. That's going to be like just part of the whole the whole system here. You will get messy. Reclaim is not fast, it's not easy. And a lot of places I work at, they don't even mess with it. You know, so that's all stuff to keep in mind. There's a lot of chunks in here too that aren't fully uh, dissolved. So I kind of did a bad job. I think I had some thick stuff in here that wasn't fully dried. And so that's going to be a problem later on. But in the meantime, we're just going to deal with it as it comes to us. And. I guess something that you're going to be trying to do, right, is you don't, you want to sort of do a test trial, right, because your clay is going to be, what's the word, it's going to dry at different rates depending on where you're at, right, and so if you're in the basement, it might take a long time to dry, if you're outside and it's dry where you live. It took a very short time. So when you first 
if you're in a stable environment, do test, see how long it takes, right? I have these big, huge plaster wheel bats that I made and they're perfect for this sort of thing, right? So I can do a lot of clay all at once because there's a lot of surface area. A lot of places won't have this sort of stuff. You can use drywall, you can use uh, masonite stuff, you can use concrete. And you also want to be careful, I mean, like what's in your reclaim bucket? You know, when I've been reclaiming clay, I've pulled out band-aids, I've pulled out all sorts of gross stuff, hair that's not mine. Uh, when I used to have this big industrial mixer, it would rip and break apart big metal things, right? And that was kind of a problem because I remember I was throwing one time and I I got cut all of a sudden. I f started feeling like a sting and I was like, what the heck? And it was a metal rib that was in the, my my bucket there and it, or in the, the, the reclaim and it totally just destroyed my my hand so be careful but that's about it you know you guys would come back here you know just keep on waiting until it's all nice and sort of firmed up and then once you're once you're done with that uh, you know I did one bucket here and a couple more buckets I'll probably do but for now this is okay but I'll see you guys in a second that's uh, my little tip for the day about how I reclaim you know then I just wedge it all up, put it in some bags, and there you go. All right. Thank you, guys. Back to the main show. Peace. Welcome back, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little, little infomercial on Reclaim. Uh, I think I'm going to start doing that. Since these videos are kind of long, I was thinking like, a, like when I was watching SpongeBob as a kid, you know, um, They'd have those like commercial breaks in the middle. So maybe like that, like you can get a break from me throwing to get a video of me doing something, something else, right? Like yesterday it was the pottery wrap today, something else, you know, it's the, the reclaim. Maybe every time I do something a little bit different, right? Okay. Something that's gonna help you a lot, Corbin, is making sure that clay is as centered as possible before you even start throwing, right? And this is my favorite thing to explain to people, right? Is when you're doing this, sometimes you, like I'll show you. To get this clay, because it's a little bit wide, when it's wider and fatter, and there's very often you'll create like a volcano or a crater in the middle, you wanna push down to go up. Do you see that? I'm, so I'm pushing down, I'm taking an angle and I'm pushing down, and if I'm tight with this hand, it's gonna, the clay only has one option, and that's to go up, right? So, when people mess up, I use that trick as a, a way to save their pots or have them start from baseline, right? And as I'm coning this clay up, Corbin, what I'm thinking about is I got my, uh, this hand here, this is my wall, my movable object. And you know, on the wall, let's say there's a mouse. There's a mouse right on that brick wall. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna, a bird of prey is gonna come from out of nowhere, out of left field. And then push. You wanna be parallel, your hands parallel to each other. And push up against that wall, right? It's, it's that swooping up against the wall. Swoop, swoop. And again, you want to make sure you get enough of that clay on the bottom. And the cool thing, Corbin, is you don't even need to use two hands to center the clay. Right? You don't need two hands to do that. You just need one. As long as, you remember when I was telling you about those butter moments earlier, man? That is, that's really, that's going to help you out so much. Because then you'll find, oh, like I actually don't need two hands for this part, right? And again down to go up swoop 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 there we go and imagine there's like a little ping pong ball right imagine there's like a little little ping pong ball right in the middle here right 
and the ping pong ball is in the middle of a water balloon and the clay is the water balloon, right? And so I'm imagining that I don't want to crush that ping pong ball, right? I'm just trying to move that ping pong ball up. And how are you, how are you moving it up is I have one hand coming up and towards itself, right? And I have my other hand sort of guiding it as well. And I'm not like literally picking it up, I'm pushing it up, right? And so you'll see here in a second, right? I'm pushing it up, right? That's that, that hands are just like almost like, they're almost down and I'm just scooping it, right? They're, they're almost pushing it down, but because the way my hands are positioned and since I'm just moving my body up, it's taking that little golf ball or ping pong ball in the middle, right? And it's staying right where I want it to go. And then all of a sudden, you know, you bring down your hammer. You can even set that fist right on your chest, man. And this will lay right on top of it. And you just want to make sure that this hand is tight to the clay, but it's not pushing the clay, right? It's tight to the clay. Right, imagine like, uh, you know, you're, you're, you fell from a bridge and you're holding onto a rope. You know, you don't want to squeeze the life out of that rope, right? Or else you're going to freaking get exhausted fast, right? But you want to be tight on the rope enough to where you're maximizing your endurance while also keeping tension on it so you're not going to fall, right? And so that's kind of the mentality that I do when I'm doing that. When I'm opening up this center, right, I can't, you can't, uh, it's important that you're not pushing the clay around, right? Don't push the clay. You're cutting the clay with your fingers. Your fingers are now a tool to cut into the clay, right? Again, direct. If you're pushing with all the palm of your hand, any inconsistency is going to get amplified, especially as you're going wider, right? And it can also happen when you're going in more, right? If you ever have a wonky top, that's also a reason why. So just you want to cut into that clay. And again, how you do that, direct, 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 direct. Not direct, right? Cut into that clay. You know, have movements with intention with the clay, right? The clay doesn't respect you. The clay doesn't even like you, man. The clay is an evil beast, right? And we should view it as such. It's evil. It hates us, right? It's literally every single second that it's it's uh, just standing there. It is trying to make itself unworkable, right? It's trying to actively every single second. It's trying to make it so you can no longer alter it. And so it's a mean. It's a mean, mean thing. Mean material. And so you gotta you gotta sort of have some have take some charge. And, and tell that material, right? Hey, you, you're not gonna mess with me, man. I'm in charge here, right? And you're gonna mess up so much, man. You're gonna mess up so much. I mess up. I can't even tell you how many times I've messed up pottery, right? And the somebody told me to. My my dad sent me a message one time when I was at my one of my lowest ceramic points. He said, "Listen to Bob Marley. No woman, no cry." One of the worst things he probably could have told me at the time. It was just like, come on, man. But it made me laugh. So, you know, maybe it, that was the purpose of it. But you're going to have moments in clay where you're going to spend hours upon hours making something, man. And then all of a sudden, it's just going to take itself from you. And again, those S-curves. That's what's so important, man. All about that S-curve. And as, as we're doing a pull, we have a natural tendency to pull it out, right? And you don't even want to pull it straight up. You sort of want to pull it inward, right? And if you're aiming a little bit inward, the spinning of the wheel is going to make it so it's almost straight, right? Because centripetal force is pushing everything out, right? So you got gravity working against you, but you also got centripetal force. And sometimes, you know, if, that's why this top rim is so important to sometimes have a little bit thicker because you can have everything fricked up in the middle, but if your bottom center and your top center, man, or your top's like stable, you're good to go. The worst is when you go too thin on the top and it loses any structural integrity. So that's why some people who make those large pots, if you just slice a little, a little rip 
in that rim, the whole pot will come apart because it's holding it all together. Or right, again, gotta get some more right. clay on the bottom there. Oh no, I went too, I went too thin. All right, so this is okay. And that's part of reacting. If I were to continue that pole, I would have ripped through right there. And so this is where my practice, this is where like my, my ceramics, thing, my mentality comes to, into play, right? I felt the clay moving and like, I'm telling you, I really felt it uh, move. It's not, I saw it, I felt it. And every time I feel that, right? I have to respond. And that's what makes my ceramic practice the way it is, right? It's all about reacting. That clay. It gave me a challenge, it gave me a problem, it gave me a puzzle, and it asked me, how are you gonna solve it, right? And then there you go. I still have a tree, it's a little bit lower, right? But the interior here is kind of interesting, you know? I have a lot of peaks and mountains. And so that's the cool thing about finding forms is you also get to find the problems and solutions that are embedded into them, right? And those problems and solutions are sometimes endless, right? Depending on how complex you're making the form. But, right? That was a pot that, in my mind, in any other instance, that pot was unsavable, right? But through clay and the act of responding, also I'm saying my I need to get a new wooden tool because my wooden tool is kind of losing its uh, it's getting sanded down a little bit too much. This one's going to be kind of fun because I'm also getting some fissuring, so it might tear, but we'll see in a second. The other one totally tore off, so that'll be kind of exciting to show you at the end here. Right. So cut, cut. It's that same pattern, cut, cut, cut. And then I got to go slow on this one because I kind of go slow on that too. Sometimes I don't go slow enough and I screw it up. Look at this, great. Look at that, great. And look at this. Oh, I ripped this one off, that's okay. Try to stick it back together there. And push it. And that's fun because it's so, the clay is so soft. What you can do is it, you can almost just, it's almost like, uh, I think like plastic. When plastic's hot, it just wants to stick to other plastic, right? When clay is really wet, you know, it's almost like once it just sticks to itself really nice and easy. But there's the last pot there, man. Um, I hope that sort of helped you out uh, in mimicking my style. If you make one of my pots, uh, like these tree forms, send me an image, man. I'd love to see it. Uh, here it is. You know, it kind of has this like cool little cavern. Glaze can like get caked up in there. So it's kind of fun. Um, how are we going to do this? I'll set this down for a second. I'll get like three bats. That works. Oh, you can see this one's starting to rip too. I'll show you the other one that ripped. Well, actually, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll hold that one that ripped. I'll have a second one. Because usually these are kind of nice to have for the thumbnail. Uh, Look at that. 
kind of funky. And then I'll have the other one right up in there. But here's that one that I threw and you saw while I was all together, man. But like for me, like people would see this as like failure, right? Like these, uh, these sort of rips and stuff, man. But me, I see like a window, I see cavern, I see space, I see architecture in these pots sometimes, right? And so that's like another thing is, you know, this teacher might say like, you gotta make something a certain way, right? And that's like totally chill, like get your assignment done, listen to them. But if you really wanna get after it and make some pots that like uh, kind of feed your soul, you gotta look beyond that sort of stuff, all right? Thank you. Uh, again, thank you so much for showing interest, Corbin. I uh, really appreciate it. And for the rest of you guys who are watching this, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing, uh, hearing me talk about more of these forms and stuff. But, all right, I'll see you guys later. All the best. Strong mentality. Peace out. <laughs>